as leaders we make many mistakes isn't it leadership like everything else is a skill and as we are developing this skill we make lots of mistakes as leaders so what are some of these mistakes and how can we avoid them that's going to be the topic of this video so stay with me right to the end in any organization and even in countries isn't it it's the leader that really sets up the nation or sets up the organization for success like i think alexander the great said i'm not scared of a group of lions led by a sheep but i am scared of a group of sheep who are led by a lion so the leader the leader is actually very very important and if the leader makes mistakes well the followers those who are following the leader are also going to fall into the same trap isn't it even in our country sometimes we have had our leaders making mistakes many mistakes what are the common mistakes that a leader makes that makes the leader look incompetent so first of all when we talk about leadership like simon sinek says leadership is not about being in charge but leadership is about taking care of those in your charge and i have my own quote on leadership as well which is the main role of a leader is to help their team members to succeed so if i'm a leader and i'm helping my team to succeed well everyone is happy i'm getting my work done i'm happy the organization is growing plus the team members are all happy because the leader is helping them to grow helping them to develop their career so in a nutshell that's what i believe what leadership is about and what simon sinek says as well so it's about fundamentally about service and taking responsibility for your team for everyone in your team all your team members leadership is not about being in charge it's about taking care of those in your charge i think that's really really important so what are some of the mistakes that make leaders look incompetent the first is not having a vision so if the leader doesn't know where the organization is going the leader doesn't have a vision where should this organization go the followers are totally confused isn't it if the captain of the ship has no idea where the ship should go well everyone in the ship is going to end up lost they don't know where they're going so the captain of the ship needs to know where he's trying to take the ship and go and everyone in the ship all the passengers which means everyone in the organization isn't it all the stakeholders so having a vision becomes extremely extremely important clear vision that is where we are trying to go and then have collective responsibility for this vision get the whole team to buy into the vision so we have one purpose one mindset one vision one goal we're going there and we're all going together so no sooner we talk about vision the first thing that comes into my mind is our 1996 cricket world cup winning team cricket world cup winning team led by arjuna ranthunga there was a very 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 clear vision that's where we want to be we want to be world champions we want to be world beaters and sri lanka was we took cricket to an entirely new level because the leader had a very very clear vision of what we want to do where do we want to go so having a vision becomes extremely extremely important for the leader of an organization because if the leader doesn't have a vision the organization is not really progressing we are just floundering not sure where we are going so having a clear vision becomes extremely important number 1 number 2 is poor communication the higher we go up in an organization technical skills of the leader become less important and the soft skills of the leader and communication is one of the most important of the soft skills becomes really really important i was working in an organization an it company one of the best uh, largest it companies in sri lanka and one day the ceo came down and made a just spoke to the team including me for maybe about 10 minutes and because of what he said in that short communication of 10 minutes about 80% of the team gave in their resignation in the next week or 10 days or so so how one leader the things that the leader says can really motivate or demotivate and create a huge impact on all the followers on everyone in that team on everyone who's listening to what this leader is saying so communication for the leader becomes extremely important because when you are the leader what you say affects everyone below you if you are the leader of a country with 22 million people you are the president of a country with 22 million people the president of the country gets on tv and starts saying something what he says affects everyone in that country all 22 million are affected by what the leader says you are a leader of an organization with 10000 people one speech you make 
one word that you say affects everyone. So as we go higher and higher in our corporate career, as we climb the corporate ladder, we have to be very careful of what we say because what we say can affect everyone under us in an instant. We can either lift people up or we can bring people down. Not only the words we say, the tone of voice, our body language, verbal, paraverbal, nonverbal, all of this together is the impact that we create as a leader. And remember, the leader is affecting the followers much more than the followers affects the leader. And there's also this concept called emotional contagion, where my emotions are affected by yours and your emotions are affected by me when we communicate with each other. And if you're the leader, your emotions get transferred much faster to everyone below you than their emotions affect you as the leader. So it's, it's very much top down, right? Because why? Everyone below the leader is looking up at the leader, trying to get direction, even emotional direction. So if the leader is upbeat, positive, optimistic, well, everyone in the team is going to be positive and upbeat and optimistic. If the leader is saying, look, we have a problem, I have no idea how to do this, and the leader has a, has a very defeatist uh, attitude, well, the whole team is going to go down in morale. The whole team is not going to find any solution. They're not going to succeed. So direction given by the leader, not only the vision, but the emotional direction as well. And that comes from the words and the tone and the body language of the leader. So verbal, paraverbal, nonverbal, extremely important. Leader affects people from what they say. I remember another cricket captain, we had worked hard and we had got to the finals of this tournament. And halfway through the match, we could see from the body language of the leader that the leader had already given up. So if the leader has already given up, there is no hope for the team, right? Uh, did we win that match? Definitely not. I remember also when my sons were playing basketball. In one of the matches, you know, halfway through, the team was maybe down by 20 points. But two more quarters to go. He could easily catch up those 20 points. But halfway through, you could see the coach with his head in his hands, looking down like that, already given up. So if that's the leader, well, the coach is really the leader, isn't it, of this team of boys. If the coach has given up, what do you expect the boys to do? <laughs> The team is going to not succeed, isn't it? So leader communicates from everything that he says and doesn't say, does and doesn't do. It's all part of communication. So as we go up, we need to be very careful of how we communicate. Or we could become an extremely incompetent leader if we don't know how our communication affects others. So communication is in, important on you know, setting expectations, what is required of the team, motivating the team, giving the team feedback, even, you know, correcting the team, for all of this, we need communication. So leader has to walk the talk. Leader has to show the way. And everyone else is going to follow what the leader is doing. The third point is not being able to delegate. And that is really a sign of a very, very incompetent leader. This happens a lot in first-time leaders. So what happens in a lot of organizations, the best individual contributor is chosen and promoted to leadership. Now, why is that? Because this guy has performed in his role as an individual contributor. So let's, let's take uh, what happens in IT companies. The best software engineer is taken and made a team lead. Now, why is he the best software engineer? He's really skilled at the job, really clever, very good at software engineering. But the best software engineer doesn't always translate into the best leader. A good individual contributor, which means the software engineer, given a task to perform on his own, can do it really well. But then we expect that to translate into, into leadership which is sometimes not the case. The best individual contributors do not, in most instances, become the best leaders because it's an entirely different skill set. So we take someone, we, 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 we promote them into leadership, we give them a team of four, five, six, eight, ten people to lead. One of the biggest problems a new leader has is they are scared to delegate. If I'm just promoted and I have people now below me, I'm thinking, if I give that guy this, this work to do, he will mess it up. And finally, it's still my responsibility. If I do it myself, I can do it without a mistake, which is probably correct. So therefore, let me do it myself because I'm scared to delegate. If I delegate and that guy messes it up, well, it's, it's still going to land in my, in my lap, isn't it? It's still my responsibility. So let's not delegate. What we forget is, how did we get to the position we are now? It's because someone developed us. Someone helped us along the way. Someone gave us opportunities to grow. Someone delegated work to us. So as a leader, we have to delegate to others. 
because that's the only way to grow our teams. Remember, help my team member to succeed. I cannot help my team member to succeed if I am not delegating. So leadership means delegation. I can't do everything on my own. If I try to do everything on my own, I'm going to die an early death, right? Because I'm taking on everyone else's work as well. So lack of delegation means micromanagement. I'm checking up on everything. Or yes, I have delegated as well, but I'm checking up on everything. I don't, you know, give people freedom to work. Should we give everyone freedom to work? No. If somebody is more theory X than Y, is McGregor's theory X and Y, yeah, if somebody needs a lot of monitoring, needs a lot of help, uh, is new to the job, is someone who doesn't like to work, is lazy to work, then yes, we do need to closely monitor. But if someone is what is called a theory Y type of person, loves to work, loves freedom, is very good, takes on responsibility, takes on ownership, well, then if you go and micromanage that fellow, he's going to get very upset, very demotivated and might even uh, leave. So inability to delegate is a, is a major problem of, of leaders. Uh, it makes us a very incompetent leader. So we have to learn how to delegate. How do we delegate? How best to delegate? That's probably a topic for another video. So stay tuned. The fourth thing that makes a leader incompetent is not uh, taking feedback or ignoring the feedback of others. Sometimes as a leader, we think, why should I take the feedback of my subordinates? I'm the leader. I don't need to listen to anyone. I know best, but no. That's why we have a team. That's why we have diverse people in that team. That's why we should actually have different points of view because you take all these different points of view and finally the solution we come up is the best because it's so many people giving us different ideas and from all these different ideas comes the best solution. So as leaders, we need to be humble that we may not know everything, humble enough to listen to others, get their opinions, but the leader might make the final call. And that's what being a leader means. The leader is finally accountable, accountable for the result of the decisions that he or she takes. Accountability means I am accountable for the result, not just let's say I'm doing a report. I'm responsible for doing this report, but I'm accountable for making sure the report has all the correct facts. It's accurate. It's error free, accountable, responsible doing the report. So accountability becomes very, very important to be accountable and to also take responsibility. Listening to the feedback of others becomes really important. So as a leader, if you truly want to get feedback from others, let's say you get your team of 20 people together and there is some problem, a challenge that you're facing. If you tell the team, look, we're having a problem. We're having a challenge. This is what I think the solution is. So you tell your team what you think first, what you think is the solution first. And then you ask for ideas from the team, you're not going to get much ideas. And only very brave team members are going to challenge what you said and say, boss, I think this was wrong. Why don't we look at it a different way? Because most people would not want to openly uh, challenge their boss, right? Because of the whole authority that comes from being a leader. Uh, there was a study done, I think in the US, where it said that so many medical mistakes are made by doctors while the nurses actually Observe this. They know the doctor is making a mistake. They know the doctor is giving the wrong medicine. But they don't challenge the doctor because of the authority of the doctor. So the nurses, knowing it's the wrong medicine, still give it to the patient. Why? Because the doc doctor prescribed it. Because of authority. So same thing happens in an organization as well. Even if the leader says something wrong, it will be very rare that we find that someone in the team is going to raise their hand and say, boss, I think that's wrong. So what do we do as leaders? If I really want to get the ideas of my team, let me get the ideas first before I state my opinion, before I take a stand. Then I'm going to get everyone's ideas because they don't know what I'm thinking. They don't know what I think the solution is. So I'm going to get the ideas, which will be very open. And also no loss of face for me. Let's say I, I thought we should do A, but I don't say that. And now the team gives me other ideas and they say, Sanjeev, why don't you do C? And I realize actually C is better than option A that I wanted to take for earlier. Now there is no loss of face, right? Because I hadn't told anyone that I'm thinking of A. So now I listen to these guys, they tell me option C, I realize it's better than A and we can very openly adopt option C with no problem, no loss of face, no one getting upset. So as a leader, getting feedback is extremely important. And if you want to get the opinions of your team, get them before you say what your opinion is. That becomes very important. So let's be humble enough to get the feedback from, from our team. 
uh, one thing that lots of great leaders do is when they have their performance appraisal, which means they are carrying out the appraisal for their team members. One of the things the leader does is not only that as a leader, not only that I give you feedback if you are part of my team, but I also ask you as a member of my team for feedback about me. So I'm, I'm learning as well. How do I become a better leader? What should I do? Tell me what I have done that I could, could do better. Tell me the mistakes I have made and let's be very open about it. So getting feedback becomes extremely important and that's number four. Number five, when we discussed it a little bit, it's lack of accountability. If the leader gets up and says, sorry, it's not me. Sorry, it's not my fault. No, you can't say that as a leader because as a leader, everything that happens in your organization or in your department, finally, the accountability is yours. That's what being a leader means. Right? We can't abdicate that. I am accountable for the results of my organization, of the work that my team members do. Finally, I am accountable. I have to make it happen. I have to take that accountability. So I can't, I can't pass the ball. I pass the buck and say, no, it, it wasn't me. I can't do that. If, if I want to do that, I should never go into leadership or become a leader. So lack of accountability, extremely important. The sixth uh, behavior of an incompetent leader or the sixth behavior that makes us an incompetent leader is resistance to change. So a leader who takes a position and says, that's what we're going to do, and then keeps going in that direction, even when there is evidence which shows that's the wrong path to take, is, is incredibly stupid, isn't it? I make a decision, we start going on this route, and after a while I realize that's the wrong route, it's the wrong decision. I should be man enough to say, I made a mistake, right? Let's come back and let's go on this other route. We find lots of times we do that as, as, as men when we are driving, isn't it? They say that men never want to stop and ask for directions. But it's better to ask for directions and realize that we are lost and then come back and go on the correct route rather than continue on the wrong path, isn't it? Just because we are too stubborn to accept that we made a mistake. So resistance to change. We, we need to be open to change because change is one of the only constants we are going to face in life, isn't it? Change is always going to be there. So I come up with a new product, I start marketing it, I spend a lot of money on it as well, but I realize, okay, that's the wrong marketing strategy. Okay, let's stop. Let's change. Why continue to spend money doing what you now know is wrong? <laughs> let's not be resistant to change. We have to change. When circumstances change, environment changes, we need to change uh, along with that. So resistance to change makes me a very incompetent leader. So we discussed six common mistakes that leaders make that makes us as leaders look incompetent. The first is not having a vision. Second, very important, uh, not being good at communication and giving uh, very bad instructions or very unclear communication, which might confuse people at best and demoralize or demotivate or even get people to leave the organization at worst. Then we discussed about how important delegation is and why uh, not being able to delegate makes us a very, very poor leader. We discussed about the importance of getting feedback from our team, from our stakeholders, learning from that. And connected to that is the next one, which is resistance to change. A change is going to be a must. Change is going to be something that's a given. It's always going to be there. So we can't be resistant to change, right? Even if I've spent a lot of money, invested a lot of money, and I realize it's the wrong thing, I need to stop there. Accept the mistake and then move on, isn't it? Accept the mistake and move on. The higher we go, we still are going to make mistakes because we are human beings. So don't worry about it. If you make a mistake, we made a mistake. If I make a mistake, I made a mistake. It doesn't mean I am the mistake. I just need to own the mistake, take responsibility for it, and then change, do something different. And that's connected to accountability, isn't it? Which was the next point, being accountable. Finally, the leader is accountable for the results that that leader's decisions result in. So leader is responsible and accountable for the, the results of his decisions. Finally, the leader is accountable if, for, for the performance of the organization. So no one said leadership is easy, but leadership can be incredibly rewarding because the main role of a leader is growing people, growing people, helping people to succeed. And there's no better feeling in the world when you have helped someone to succeed and you see the results of that in front of your eyes. All the hard work makes sense and it's so rewarding. So I wish that 
all of you that you can feel those results, see those results as you grow people in your leadership journey. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click the like button. If you haven't subscribed so far, please subscribe. It would be so fantastic to have you watching our next videos uh, as well. If there's any particular subject you want me to talk about, something I can help you with, uh, please put it into the comments and uh, we'll try our best to make that happen for you. Okay then, till the next video, stay safe and stay blessed.